My grandfather was a chef. My grandmother and my mother are both exceptional cooks. And then there is me, an insult for old Italian cuisine. But this is probably the best time ever to get better at it. So in this video, I'm gonna try to take 79 years of cooking experience and transfer them into our heads by learning how to make the original carbonara made with fresh pasta at home. To choose the ingredients, I decided to use the same old Italian book that my granny uses for her recipes. And so for the fresh pasta, we simply need semolina flour, salt, and warm water. I'm gonna try to make it old school, using the table as a work surface. If you don't wanna do that, you can use a normal bowl. My granny just explained me all these steps. So we're gonna start by making a mountain of semolina flour. Then we're gonna make a sort of crater into the center. And after that, we're gonna add salt inside of it. At this point, we need a little bit of water. I have no idea how to do this. Now we start kneading with a fork, and then we keep kneading, slowly adding water to the dough. Once you poured all the water, you're gonna have something like this. And it's time to start kneading using the hands. I wasn't really sure about the look of my dough, so I decided to ask my granny. Come this <laughs> She suggested me to add a little bit more water to the dough and she taught me how to knead properly. You basically have to keep folding the dough into itself and pushing it against the worktop. And we just have to keep repeating the same process. Keep kneading for about 10 minutes and don't be gentle with the dough. At this point we are gonna put the dough into a bowl and we're gonna leave it there for about 30 minutes, covering it with food film to avoid the contact with the air. Finally, after 30 minutes, we are ready to remove the dough from the bowl. And we're gonna throw a little bit of flour on the pasta and the work surface. This prevents the pasta to get sticky. And now we can start working the dough to give it its final shape. My mother has a pasta machine, but I can imagine that the majority of you doesn't have it. So I'm gonna try to do it old school on this table. So we proceed to cut the dough in half and then we just need to roll it out. By the way, from now on, you'll need a rolling pin. We start rolling the dough out, then folding it into thirds, turning it 90 degrees and then rolling it out once again. We repeat the same process for about 2-3 times total and then finally we can roll it out until it's thin, just like this. From this position you can make many different things, such as ravioli or lasagna. In this case I want to make fettuccine. Now it's time to cut. We simply cut out the rough edges and then we should end up with a nice rectangle. Then we're gonna fold in it 2 or 3 times, always throwing a little bit of flour on the surface. I move the roll on a wooden worktop and then finally we can start cutting out the final shape. Don't press too much or you're gonna crush the fettuccine. Also wanna clarify that I don't know what I'm doing. I am the hands, my non is the brain of the operation. Now we're gonna furl the fettuccine and we're gonna put them on a baking tray. Like everything else in this world, the first time you try to do something, you're probably gonna be pretty bad. And so am I. These are terrible. But then I tried again and it was a little bit better. You will have to repeat the same steps for all the remaining dough. The process doesn't change, but I can guarantee you that after a bit of practice, you'll gain confidence and you'll slowly get better. And after a few tries, you'll probably start getting decent results. The secret here is to put a good amount of flour before folding and cutting the pasta. This prevents it to get sticky, and then it gets much easier to unfurl. Then I also understood the right width for the pasta we're gonna use to cook the carbonara. My first fettuccine were too large, so I went back and I cut them in half. In the end, I made five baking trays of fettuccine, and my nonna used the remaining pasta to cut out smaller pieces, and then using them to cook up pastina, which is basically pasta soup. For the carbonara sauce, we need guanciale. Really tasty, but if you can't find it, you can use pancetta, just like me. Pecorino romano, grana or parmigiano reggiano, four eggs for four people, salt and pepper. First, we need to prepare the water we're gonna use to cook the pasta. When the water is hot, we're gonna put the pancetta into a cold pan. We add a little bit of extra virgin oil, and then we're gonna turn on the heat on medium. And at this point, we start preparing the sauce. I really don't know how to break an egg. My nonna, moved by compassion, decided to show me how to break an egg. And then I decided to try to do it myself. I used three entire eggs and just a yolk for the remaining one. My granny says that this should make the sauce a little bit more creamy. No! Then we grate 20 grams of parmigiano and 30 grams of pecorino. Now we need to beat the eggs. This is how my granny does it. And we keep beating the eggs until we have a uniform sauce. And finally we add parmigiano and pecorino to the sauce. As a last touch we add a little bit of pepper and then we stir again. My mom suggested me to not put salt into the sauce since the pancetta is already pre-salty. When the water is boiling we add a little bit of salt. And at this point we throw the fresh fettuccine into it and we stir a little bit. And take in mind that the fresh pasta needs just a few minutes to get cooked. When the pancetta is ready, we turn off the stove to let it cool down a little bit. And the best way to understand when the pasta is ready is to taste it. Mm. 
So we turn off the stove. At this point we mix the pasta with the pancetta and we let it cool down by stirring it. We have to make sure that all the pasta is covered with the pancetta fat. And finally we can pour the sauce into the pan. As a last touch we put a little bit of parmesan on top and a little bit of pepper. And this is the carbonara. You can really taste the difference between a handmade pasta and a normal pasta you can buy in a store. I really really hope you decide to try this and if you do, please send me your results on Instagram. A special thanks to my granny and my mother for allowing me to feel what it's like to be Italian for one day. I'll see you next week with a new skill.